All right, guys, welcome back. It's been like 18 to 20 weeks of nothing but rain, snow, and sleet. Uh, we have got to get this Honda buttoned up, but first, got to get the cars out of the driveway, get this thing in there. Uh, as you guys know, I'm always working out in the weather, so now that we finally get some decent weather, let's get this finished. All right. <laughs> So as you guys know, this little Honda uh, was in a rear end collision. I cut it up, put the S10 bed on the back of it. So far, right before winter hit, life got just too crazy busy. And then the weather came. So this has been sitting outside all winter. I have the rear tarp so that way the water doesn't get too crazy inside the car. But as you guys know, I keep my motorcycle in the garage. It's too nice to leave outside. So this has been waiting for weather like this. We gotta get the rear tail light harness figured out. So we got brake lights, tail lights, turn signals, all of that in the back. Uh, but first we gotta get the cars out of the driveway, get this up there so we can start digging into that back harness and get it wired. All right, let's go. that this thing has been just sitting as you can tell a lot of the raw steel stuff is rusty just because the weather we get so much salt in the rain that it's just hard to keep keep stuff looking good we'll grind all that down to clean fresh metal get it all painted and primed once all the welding is done and then once all that's done we'll be able to shoot it with a color now the chevy badge is disappearing I do have a Honda badge that's going on the back off of a Honda Odyssey. I do also have a roll pan, which will be getting the uh, original plate that matches the front one up front because I did keep all of that. I also did keep the trunk lid because as you know, this generation of Honda, the reverse lights were actually in the trunk lid, not in the vehicle. So I'm going to have to open the harness up, see where those wires went into the trunk and then just extend those out so I can utilize the reverse lights in the actual taillight housings. Now, as far as this goes, pretty simple, easy. A lot of people can figure this out for yourself. All you need is a test light. I mean, not even somebody else, but somebody else just operating the switches and you'll be able to figure out left, right, brake, all of that just by having somebody up front going through the switches. Now, all of this sheet metal is just kind of sitting in here. I'm gonna slide all this out because the harness is gonna be underneath the rear tray. And then I just have these for mounting and testing purposes. These are just sitting in here. Uh, I have brand new lenses, the third brake light. I have a brand new third brake light lens as well. But once we get it all painted, all that stuff will come off. Brand new stuff will go on. But yeah, let's uh, let's dig into it. So I feel like while the weather's nice, I'm gonna pull these panels out. We're gonna get the taillights wired. Uh, in the 20 weeks that we have been having rain, I've only been able to work on this one day in the last three months. So you will see that I have gotten into the harness a little bit and have figured that out. But until then, we'll just pull these panels off, get in there and get this finished and wired in.
us. But, so, as we get in here, we can see there's two leads to this harness, all right? We got these plugs that'll plug into that, which run to the rest of the car. So this is the main harness that it feeds all of the rear components. So because this was a sedan, it would have been speakers, stereo, uh, turn signal, chassis lighting, all of that. So what we're gonna do, I got these frayed out. We're gonna test those leads. I am gonna pull a schematic and see uh, which one of these guys, because this went up, this would have controlled like the third brake light, reverse lights, the inner park light, all of that. So I have to go through all of these guys see what is in here and how I can uh, get these to work with the third brake light that's on the back of the cab. Now, I've already started wiring in some of these guys. Uh, and then at, at that point, I'm gonna get bulbs into all of these housings so I can test everything. Now, if we go to the damaged trunk lid, as you can tell, there are reverse lights inside as well as the tail light. So we're gonna flip this. And then as you can tell, when I was cutting it out, I I just cut everything. So we're gonna pull these, figure out which one this is. This is probably the tail. And then these wires, this solid green and black, that's gonna be the reverse. I just have to isolate that, put a bulb on it, see if that fires up when you put it in reverse, simple. Now, another thing I have to wire in, I have to remember this, is the old license plate light. The license plate light in the trunk will not fit our aftermarket roll pan. We have to wire in a circuit. I did find a plug that'll fit my aftermarket light that I got for it. So we're gonna just wire this in, get it soldered here at the joint, and then run the shrink wrap onto it. That's about it for now. I'll uh, try to hook up the uh, camera somewhere to kind of get me testing all these guys while we got some good weather all right so the cool thing with having books is you get to know exactly what you're trying to look for so when we look here and we see that this says brake pedal switch right so that's the brake this is the wire that is controlled by the brake light which is going to be a white and black wire now when we come over here tail lights Okay, so you see a tail light relay. So when you click your, your tail lights on, we have tail lights and license plate light. Now red and black is going to be your tail lights as well as your license plate light. And then the white and black is going to be your brake light. So we go to the Honda, and then here is going to be those two wires, white with black stripe and the red and black stripe. So we gotta get these wired, okay? Cause these are gonna be tail light, brake light, and turn, okay? Gotta remember, turn signal, power, is going to be going into these guys. So we have a little bulb for the corner, okay? Marker light, which is gonna be tail light. And then the big one, tail light. So we got both these browns gonna go together. And then on this side, it's gonna be this yellow for turn. And just like how this dark green is going to be this turn. Now, Chevy wiring is awesome, okay? They have never changed in throughout the years of chassis electrical. You got yellow for turn, green for turn. You got browns for tails. I mean, they it's all the same for Chevy. So that's not a problem. The problem is, is that when I went to look for the harness, for this Honda, apparently the only thing that is out there on the World Wide Web is how to wire a radio. How to wire a radio. That's it. I couldn't find a chassis diagram. I couldn't find anything. Luckily, I found that book at one of our thrift stores for nine bucks. So yeah, so let's get into it. All right, guys. So after some troubleshooting, I was able to track down the fact that the way that the Honda works for its rear lighting without like ballast resistors and stuff like that to regulate the power because the circuits in the S10, it only allows two circuits per bulb max. So the way the Honda was wired, it had three different sets of bulbs. So to get the turn signals to work properly, what I'm gonna do, these are just old housings. I have brand new ones. 
As you can tell, I drilled another hole here, which will allow for a third bulb to go in. So I will have my side marker and my tail light, as well as my brake light. And then the reverse light has its own dedicated hole, but I have no turn. I can't run the turn onto the reverse because the reverse is a clear lens. So the easiest solution is to wire in a fourth socket, which I will. It'll go in just like that and that'll solve the problem. So my buddy Paul showed up today. He's helping out for a little bit. Uh, we're gonna try to get some extra circuits wired in so I can actually use a turn signal. So here we go. So we were able to get all of the wiring done now. So as you can tell, all of that is now working correctly, working as it should. I'll have uh, I'll have Paul hop into the vehicle and we'll uh, check these real quick. So as you can tell, I had to wire in another big socket. And the reason why is because this socket, these two big ones here. So this socket here can only handle two circuits, right? So I wired this for tail and brake. This one is going to be reverse, this one here. And then this one, we wired in as a turn. So what I'm gonna do is this, I'm gonna drill a hole in the new back of the housing and it's gonna go in sideways. It's gonna go in sideways like this. And then that brake is going to come in this direction. So that way they're both in there. They're both gonna be inside the housing and they'll both work and do as they should. This one's a marker light that goes on the side. But yeah, so we're gonna fire this up. So Paul, go ahead and turn your headlights on. And so we got headlights. And then go ahead and hit your brake. Turn brake off. And then go ahead and put it in reverse. And then go ahead and cancel reverse. And then turn signal. It's looking pretty good. Wiring's all nice, clean up against that side. Looking pretty good. Uh, I'm going to let this dry out for another day because today's literally been the only day, good day we've had in 18 weeks that the car has actually not been wet. Next task is going to be getting that third brake light working. I have the old wiring up in this corner for the sunroof actuator and a bunch of other electronics. I have seen it arcing a couple times, so we're going to have to figure out what those wires go to because they have hot power all the time. These wires in the top corner here are going to be what's next, uh, what we have to do and figure out, isolate, either seal them off so they don't touch anything or uh, wire them to what they need to be wired to. So we got to figure that out. All right, guys. So the sun is going down. We're losing light. I'm going to go in and get something to eat, but we got brake lights are all working. Turn signals are all working. Reverse lights are working. The third brake light in the S10 part of the cab is working. I also was able to get the dome light to work with the Honda door. So not only do the lights down there work, but also the S10 dome light works. Got all this wired in today. All the lights are working as they should. So hopefully maybe tomorrow 
I'll have all the lenses put in and then we can start getting the bed finished and buttoned up. So here's to tomorrow. Hopefully we get another good day like today and we will see you then. And day two. All right, guys. So as you can tell, we are probably not going to be uh, uh, working outside. Yeah. So I kind of needed the good weather today so I could get the rest of the cab section welded up on the back of the car. So unfortunately, this is the Oregon coast life, you know. So we are... I'll, I'll take you inside and maybe do something else, but as far as today, the Honda will sit yet again another day. Well guys, yet again, another weekend, I'm not working on the truck. So, every single weekend it's been raining, now it's snowing. So we'll see what this looks like tomorrow morning. <laughs> Peace. Well guys, we're not working out on the car today, so the Honda's gonna stay there. And uh, yeah, that's about all I gotta say about that. All right, guys, so it is officially good weather. We got two days, today and tomorrow, to get the rest of this buttoned up and get the rear cab section watertight, and then uh, go from there. So here we go. All right, guys, so how do you get four bulbs to fit in a housing with three? You gotta drill another one. What we're gonna do, we're going to drill a hole into this housing that'll support the fourth bulb here and then we will match it to what i have already done there let's get at it all right guys so three holes we need to make a fourth we know that on the inside of the frame here for the tailgate we can't go forward so what we're going to do we're going to get that drilled in here uh and then that way this bulb coming in at this angle this bulb goes in this angle we will be able to clear the wires for a bulb that goes in at that angle. Get this hole drilled real quick, and then we'll go test fit it and see if we like it or not. So now we got a rough hole. Uh, so we're gonna go and see if we can test fit that, make sure that the bulb fits inside there. Uh, because these bulbs are set with a locking cap, uh, and this one won't, we don't wanna go too big on the hole for the bulb to not be able to fit in and just fall out. We want it to be nice and tight, so when you push it in, it stays there. So this is the rear roll pan. So this is where her license plate would go. And we've got to wire in this LED light into the opening there. And then all of that will be going down at the bottom of the car. First, I have to mark 
where the exhaust will be. Got to cut and notch that out. And then we got to get this light installed here. So here we are in the back of the Honda. Uh, I got the rocker on here. We have to figure out, we got to get this uh, license plate light wired in. I do have the harness. The harness I just tucked up kind of out of the way. We just have to tie these two wires, this ground, and then this power in and then that'll be all set. Also, the nice thing is, I think Honda actually made it to where these were ready to be converted into trucks because they have these brackets in the back that's supposed to hold the bumper on. You can actually see it right here in this frame and then barely right here outside of frame. I only need a gap of about two and a half inches to space this out and then that will actually hold the bottom of this rocker up. So I'll probably just get a piece of tubing and then a two and a half inch bolt and then just literally bolt it up. Uh, I can get my ratchet and stuff in there so it's not gonna be too hard. But we're gonna get this wired in, so here we go. Okay, so as you can tell, I did electrical tape these. Uh, the reason why I electrical taped them is because this rocker panel will be probably coming off here in the near future. Um, I would like to put a plug here just in case the light does fail. I have an easy way of just pulling the pigtails and cutting them, popping a new light in and then just plugging it in. But for now, this is going to work for us uh, because I want to test and make sure that this light is working and we got a working license plate light so that's all wired in next is going to be securing the rest of the rocker panel so i have to i did bend these tabs out i'm going to pull the fender in a little bit and get a self-tapping screw into that and then i'll go in behind it and weld it up weld the tab to the inner part of the fender well so we got the rocker all taken care of it's kind of hanging up there right now. We've got about eight screws in it. Looking pretty good. Got the license plate light wired in. That's working as it should. Got the plate on it. So next is going to be tackling the cab. Getting the cab corners welded up. Getting the sails and B-pillars finished. So we're cutting up some uh, cardboard right now. And we will get that tackled. So now we just came back from lunch and uh the sun is no longer directly in our eyeballs so it's going to make it nice later half of the day be getting these so paul while i was uh making the rear rocker and stuff fit and the tail light harness and stuff was making these which will be going right in there uh they're going to be the cab corners and then right now he's making the cardboard templates for these b pillars which will be uh sheet metal which right there then we got just got to transfer this into some sheet metal uh but first while paul's getting that done i do have to get this harness put away i gotta get these ends put a little bit of heat shrink on them get the uh door jam put back together where i pulled it out so i could get the uh access to the door button for the light here we go
all right guys so now that we got all the wiring and stuff situated for the third brake light of the s10 God damn it. Got stuff all over my face all right guys so now that we got all the wiring done for the s10 third brake light and got all the wiring up and out of the way uh, next is going to be getting these cab corners welded up so there's no more hole here and then also these b pillars uh getting them to where they're going to be seamless so cardboard's your best friend you build a template then you just take this template and you make a sheet of metal that perfectly fits inside this one fits perfectly into there so we got i wrote it out with a sharpie got all the metal clean so now we have to get this burned in get this done get these cap corners because i'd like to at least get a day let them cool down sit so we got to go get a welding blanket cover the windows real quick and the sunroof because i believe that's ultimately how the rear window blew out was i got some of that hot slag onto the glass and then that night it got really cold and blew out the next morning i walked out to the car and it was in a million pieces so i'm going to kind of protect these because i don't want to have to get doors i don't want to get another sunroof i already have a back window that i'm going to put in this so i'm not too worried about it but yeah let's uh let's get those put in so when you're welding and when you're working with metal especially metal that's got a curve to it you want to kind of work from the middle out so middle up middle down because as the metal heats up it'll expand so you want to be able to compensate for that uh, so what we're going to do we're going to get this kind of where we need it to be we're going to bring it up or down just a little bit tack in our two metal welds and then walk our way out from there and then come back to the middle and then come down to the bottom that way we'll get a nice even burn in and that is also so the metal doesn't wave or distort because you can't concentrate so much heat uh, all at once, so. All right, so now that we have them set about an inch apart, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and every middle, we're gonna do another one and then we're going to go around do a full circle and then after that we're going to come around and then hit the either side and then it'll be a nice solid seamless just like how we did down here on the the body seam once we grind this off and we fill it with some filler uh it'll look just the same nice seamless so uh we will get this little guy installed here which is going to be the cat corner so this is next Now that we have the metal in there it looks bad but once we get in here we can smooth some of this out we'll uh come in weld it again smooth it down weld it again uh make sure all this is nice and seamless it doesn't really matter if the formity is there because i will be filling this in and making it smooth uh so it looks appealing to the eye but now we have to go down and hit every one of these in the middle and get them to where uh get it to where it's going to be seamless so
as you can tell, what you're doing is you're just introducing small little spot welds. Spot weld, after spot weld, after spot weld, after spot weld. And what that does, because this is what's called a lap stitch. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take the flapper wheel on the grinder, smooth all this up, and stuff like right here, I might add one. I might add one there, might one there. The more weld that you can get into the seams, the better, because ultimately you want it unified. The problem is when you do unify and you keep all of that heat into the metal, it's gonna warp. I am working with two different types of metal. This galvanized sheet is about twice as thick as the cab of the S10 and the cab of the Honda. You really gotta watch how much heat you go into it because you'll be welding on the galvanized no problem and then when you go to pull because you always go on the thick metal first and then pull to the thin once you get your pull started you can actually just burn right through which i did in a couple spots as you can tell right here it's really pulled up and then you can tell right here where it's really pulled up i had to actually fill that back in so yep we're gonna hit this with a wheel real quick see what it looks like and go from there All right, so we got it all knocked down. Uh, it's looking pretty good. What you really wanna do, you wanna have some kind of strength in this. So when you shoot it with paint, you won't have an issue of this looking absolutely horrible. Uh, so stuff like this, that's gonna have a deep cavity. You wanna go with stranded fiberglass uh, filler because the fiberglass adds support. Uh, and that what we're, that's what we're gonna use. I got a couple things of that, that it will smooth all of this out and look really good. So, off to the next one.
All right, guys. So we are out of light for the night. We were able to get cab corners. Well, oh, sorry, finger operating. Was able to get the uh, cab corners done. Was also able to get all of the B pillars welded in. They look great. Uh, next step is going to be tomorrow. I got to finish the roll pan in the back, which it looks really good. Got the plate on it already. So looks really good. But still got to get the rest of this finished and get the upper part at the third brake light done. There is still spots that I have to weld in up here that will need to be addressed, but that is for tomorrow. So we will see you in tomorrow. Peace. All right, guys, day two, technically day three on video. We are going to get the rest of this cab section welded up. And then also we're getting a pretty late start today. It's 2.30 in the afternoon. Fortunately, I had to go in. I relieved my uh, coworkers for their lunches. And then my father-in-law asked me to come help uh, fix his water line. Uh, so had to go out and do that. Luckily, Paul was here, so we went and go and helped him take care of that. Uh, but now, back to the truck. So, this area of the cab section, I still have to weld up. So, we're going to pop this lens out. Uh, once that's welded, we're going to hit all of these nasty welds that sat in the wintertime. Uh, we're going to clean all this up and get it prepped. And then I also have to make two small little squares that will go into this part of the drip rail here. That will prevent water from getting in there. Uh, and then we'll just throw some filler in and then smooth all this out. So other than that, we're trying to get this cab at least ready to go, get filler on it, get it sanded. If I can get to the bed today, that would be awesome. But because we're so late today, that might be next weekend if the weather holds out. Until then, let's get to it. We'll get that lens out, get that welded up. Alright guys, so now that we got all of this uh, welded on, what we're going to do is we need to scuff the metal about three inches worth on the top of the cab. Enough to uh, allow that filler to adhere and to have enough material. I can feel high and low spots all along here and it's due to the fact that when you're welding, it introduces heat and it'll pin bind up on the metal and make the metal contour. So we just got to take this, scuff it up clean it, wipe it down, then get some filler on it.
just gotta wipe all this down, clean it up, and then mix some filler and get these sealed up. So we got this all cleaned up, we've got uh, some degreaser on it, was able to clean it up. We have to get some filler on it tonight because tomorrow is supposed to be a good day and I want a nice solid day for it to harden and we can get these cracks finished. Whenever you're dealing with stuff and you need some thick short strand fiberglass filler is awesome. Uh, you don't have to go with Bondo, you can go with like ever bond or whatever as long as it's a filler and that you can use it and then a good set of spatulas all right guys so we are using the short strand fiberglass and what we want to do is we actually want to push in to the low side and what that does it'll actually help support the area in underneath that so we're going to build all this up and then we'll sand it down that time of the night we are done we got the short strand fiberglass all the way up the sides across the top so we have to let that harden now it's ready to go both sides we got this side all taken care of too so we got to wait until all this dries which it's pretty dry now but i am losing daylight and i have work tomorrow so if this is the first time you guys have been watching we appreciate you uh, my wife appreciates you if you like watching weird stuff like this uh stay tuned because we still got to get the rest of this filled in glassed the bed finished get it all sanded shoot it with a color so this is not the end of the honda truck but it is the end tonight so we will see you in the next video thank you Dad!